In this episode, I'm going to try to provide my balanced take on the current situation in Splinterlands, um, what my current plans are, and what I'm going to be doing moving forward. Uh, this is bound to be controversial, so if this sounds interesting to you, please strap in and stand by. Hey all you Splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying thanks for dropping by. I do appreciate your time. Well, uh, there have been several people over the last couple weeks that have asked my, for my opinion on how the game stands, uh, what I'm doing in the game, and where I'm going from here. Uh, and I've been, <laughs> frankly, largely avoiding this. Uh, not because I didn't want to give you my opinion, it's because I wanted to kind of step back and see how all the changes that have recently been made in the game kind of have evolved and how it's impacted the game. And I'll be frank with you, I just made about an hour worth of video uh, with clips and everything like that, and it was so rambling that I just deleted it, okay? And I'm starting over with it, okay? So uh, excuse me if this is rambling a little bit, but I'll try to be a little bit more concise, okay? My feelings are basically this, to be short and sweet. Um, the recent changes that Matt and the team made uh, had some far-reaching, unintended consequences. Okay, So I don't think that they set out to affect the game in the way it's affected right now. Okay, And I think that it's fixable. Okay, So what do I mean? I think... Uh, and this might cause a little bit of uh, fire in the comments, but that's fine. Uh, let me know how you think. Uh, just ex explain the reason why you think that you do, okay? But I think both leagues are broken, okay? At this point in time, uh, Modern League is a league on the top end for people with maxed out decks, okay? So I've watched a lot of coverage on this, a lot of people opining on it, as well as I've tried playing myself. And you can get into modern and in silver, you're playing against maxed out decks. Okay. And modern, um, I know things have changed and things have evolved, but modern was largely supposed to be a league. And in, in most other card games you play, they have a league like modern that is geared for the newest card sets. And this is specifically to help get new people into the game, okay? Because uh, largely the newest card sets are the easiest ones to come by and usually the cheapest, okay? Not in all cases, but usually, okay? And in this situation, we've went from where modern was that. There are other issues, right? But it's moved to a complete polar opposite. Now it's um, a league for whales. Now, this isn't a, uh, a, a rant on whales. I think that if you spend a lot of money on your card deck and um, you're playing it in modern and reaping the rewards for it, more power to you, okay? I'm not saying against that. I just think that there should be some room, however constructed, for new people to come in or even us old people to come in and play in modern at the lower end and up to mid-level and not have to face max level decks, okay? So that's that's my reasoning behind uh, my statement that I think that modern is broken, okay? Now, wild's broken too, in my opinion, okay? And it's broken for a much different reason, okay? So uh, we started out after the initial changes uh, by me you know, being kind of um, mystified why my deck, which was largely just a gold deck, mid-level, not even a max-level gold deck, why it was making it to champ three, okay? I had never hit champion. I had never gotten out of diamond two with that deck, okay? Uh, even back in the days in playing modern, okay? And then, you know, uh, time went along, and I got an explanation. Several people, we talked about it on our live stream about why that is happening. It's due to such a high amount of bot farm, largely, decks that are playing in wild that have low-end cards. So percentage-wise, my deck, which is a pretty decent deck, goes all the way to the top really fast. Now, to compound that, 
we have recent reports this last week or two where there's several YouTubers have done videos on this, as well as I've heard this from just some general chatter, that people are able to play in wild uh, with the bots or just by themselves with only soulbound cards and make the rewards, okay? That's a whole different problem, but both of those play into the fact that my statement why I think that wild is broken as well. So we're in a situation where I don't want to say once again, but we're in a situation where both uh, leagues are broken, in my opinion, and we are trying to go into a situation where we're trying to attract new players, right? So they're working on, uh, they're focusing on the player experience and largely the new player experience too, because what do we want? Okay. We want a game that can attract new people that are not web three aficionados. They're not token heads, right? Okay. So we are here, you, me, and the, the rest of the audience that are largely stuck around with Splinterlands over the years because we were attracted for one reason or another. I was a miner. I mined coins. Uh, when I saw the advent of these type of games, Web3 games start coming out, they really intrigued me. I got into Splinterlands. That's what intrigued me, the idea of being able to buy, sell, trade cards and do it online in an NFT format, plus make money doing it, right? And that's the way it was advertised, make money doing it, you know, play to earn, okay? But what we need to do is we need to be able to attract uh, Web2 people, okay? All those people that spend thousands of dollars on Fortnite skins and uh, all the other uh, Counter-Strike and, you know, I'm showing my age there, but all the other games, people play, pay thousands and thousands of dollars on a yearly basis just for what a, a amounts to be in-game art, right? We need those people in the game. And to do that, they need to improve the game. They need to make it very user-friendly so that people can come into the game for no cost, get started for no cost. I'm not saying, I'm not saying be able to make any, you know, any SPS or DC or anything off of those, but be able to jump in with like ghost cards or what have you, start playing the game and be enticed into the game. Um, have new features that make people want to come back, you know, daily rewards, check-in rewards, um, series of quests where you go along and they lead you through learning how to play the game. And then you get small rewards now and again, okay? They don't have to be extremely valuable, but it has to, you know, give them a good experience so they get in and start playing the card game, like it, and then they say to themselves, hmm, I could buy a few packs. And you, know, you as well as I know that a few packs lead to a few more packs and a few more packs. That's how it goes. But that's where we need to be in that situation. And we can't be in that situation if both leagues are broken. Okay. Now, with all that said, you may be saying to yourself, wow, Bronze Dragon's being a uh, downer today. Uh, he sounds like he's about to jump ship. Quite the opposite. Let me tell you what I've been doing. Um, and... Once again, not investment advice, but this is more, this comes from a, a, a card player who's played card games for quite a many years and also in sort of like an investor type uh, theory on this, okay? And what I mean by this is we're in a situation now where card prices have plummeted. Values of the tokens have plummeted. And you know as well as I do, that most investment advice says buy when things are low. Okay. Obviously, you might come back and say, well, I mean, it may be going down to zero. Possibly. Okay. But my take on it is that while there are a fair amount of people getting out of the game, which is the exact opposite of what we want to happen, they're trying to recoup some of that money that they put into the game. But I'm here to tell you that compared to stuff we bought during the height of the bull run, people are getting pennies on the dollar today. Okay. So all that to say that I've been buying a few cards. Okay. Not a lot of cards, but some specific cards that, um, you know, were too good to pass up. I'll give you for instance. Uh, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I've largely stuck with level six rare summoners. Chaos Chaos Legion. Legion. Well, within the last week, 
I went ahead and bought a max level Kelia Frindle and max level Obsidian gold foil. Now, I already had them at level 6, so I boosted them from 6 to 8, which was 11 BCX each. But my point is the prices were really nice, so I couldn't really uh, pass it up. Okay, so that's one thing I've been doing. I've been picking and choosing some cards to help my deck out. Okay, I'm not saying this is for everybody, and if you're bailing out of the game, more power to you. If uh, I don't have anything against people who have put lots of money into something, and in their brain, they see that they want to recoup and get out, nothing against that. Because any investment strategy has to start off one of the things that you start off in an investment strategy is how you're going to get out. Okay. So with that said, people are selling off. I'm taking advantage of it. Not to a large extent. I've bought, you know, four or five cards over the last two weeks, but they were higher end cards that I was looking for. I've okay. also continued in buying SPS. Uh, if you've been watching, you know that I've been dollar cost averaging into SPS on a weekly basis. Uh, not a lot, but I've, uh, since the beginning of the staking of SPS uh, changeover for play rewards, uh, I've more than five times uh, my, is that the way you say it? What I have staked in SPS is more than five times what I did back then. Anyway, so I continue to, especially uh, as uh, the price of SPS has went down, uh, you know, obviously get more, getting more on a weekly basis for the money I'm spending. Okay, so I'm continuing to do that too. Um, so these are not the words of a person that is getting ready to bail out of the game. These are the words that of a person that is hopeful that the game makes a turnaround and some of these changes that they're instituting really work uh, after they uh, kind of play around with them and uh, get them right. Okay, so I'm looking forward to that time period where are uh, the things we've bought in game, the cards and the SBS and everything, do go up in value. So don't take it as I'm sitting here complaining. I'm just trying to be realistic. So with all that said, where does that leave me? That leaves me in the position I've been in for quite a while. My uh, account is played in wild by Archmage. Uh, I would like to get to a spot where I have a reason and would love to look forward to getting into the game and playing in modern and giving myself a reason to go ahead and buy those new rebellion packs or whatever the new pack is out there so I can jump into modern get a little bit better uh, SPS out of it, but also have a better overall experience. I would like to be able to log into the game on a daily basis and get rewarded for that. Having check-in bonuses, having a series of quests to go through and things of this nature. All these things that a lot of different games have that Splinterlands does not, okay? Um, and there's lots, lots of good ideas floating around out there at town halls and in all these various live streams we have. Um, and I think there's a large group of people that really want the best for Splinterlands. We want to see it succeed. I want to be coming home from work and wanting to log into the game. Okay. Um, I'm looking forward to obviously land 2.0 and how that evolves as well. But like I said, at the present time the the team has kind of taken the focus off of that to work on the game with a small team, you have to make those choices, right? This video has just been so hard to make. I mean, it's for a video that's probably less than 20 minutes, it's taken me about four or five hours to make just because it's been so difficult for me to figure out what to say. Because at the heart of the matter is, I invested so much money in at the beginning and started playing and loved it, and then it just kind of, to me, slid. And I lost interest and at some points, it was like playing and hitting your head against the wall. And now I'm just kind of melancholy. I'm just kind of in a situation where I would love to see something great happen. And that little spark or what they call the X factor happen. And it jump off. So I'm biding my time until that time point or that time period. And I'm looking for deals on cards. I'm not going to spend a ton of money on them. Um, but... The nice point here is if you're you're a buyer right now, it's your market, right? Got tons of great cards to choose from. Um, the SPS is low. You can in, increase your bags. I'm not necessarily saying this is investment advice, 
But if you're so disposed and you have a favorable outlook or, you know, if you're like me and you are hoping for the best in the game, uh, now's the time. Uh, otherwise, if you're leaving, uh, you know, I hate to see people leave the, you know, the, the game because there's, there's been a lot of people leave lately that were big names, you know. So I know my feelings I've expressed here are going to draw out some fiery comments. So be it. I just had to go ahead and answer up uh, to the questions I had put before me. I didn't want to appear like I was ducking. It's been largely, I've been largely covering a lot of other games because I've been searching for something that I found, you know, was was having fun doing, you know, and I kind of lost that with Splinterlands. So I hope we get back there, though. I, I really do. Here's fingers crossed. Either way, this has been Ron's Dragon. Uh, I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy, and I will see you on the flip side. Thank you.